Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Good morning. It's good to see this uh, number out this morning. We thank and praise God that you've uh, taken time out of your day to be part of us here at First Baptist. And we, uh, we want to welcome you this morning if you're here as a visitor. Uh, and if you're here as a visitor and you've never, never been here before, we'd like for you to fill out one of our uh, visitor cards. It's attached to the bulletin. If you just uh, take that and put it in the offering plate. Uh, we'd like to know a little bit more about you, and we'd appreciate that. Uh, don't forget now, next Sunday, uh, we'll be starting our uh, revival with uh, Brother Bill Sower to be here preaching, and uh, Paul Pitts will be a, uh, a singing, and his wife will be playing the piano, and we're just going to have a wonderful time, and uh, we're looking forward to the service next Sunday, so be much in prayer for our, our upcoming revival. We'll be starting uh, uh, in the morning service next Sunday, so... Keep that in mind and, and try to invite someone to be uh, part of the service uh, for our revival. Let's go to God in prayer this morning and then we'll uh, ask Brother uh, Billy to come and read some scripture. Our Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you and we praise you, God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for the many blessings in life that you give us. We thank you, Father, for uh, you loving us. Just ask you, Lord, that you would just forgive us, Lord, where we've failed you, Lord, and Pray, Father, that you would just uh, uh, impact our life. And pray, Father, that you would just uh, be with uh, Brother Gary this morning, the choir, as they sing to us. And just ask you, Lord, that you would just help us to uh, worship together this morning in music. And pray, Father, that you'd just be with us in the message. And pray, Father, that everything that we do, we pray, God, that it would just glorify and honor you. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture uh, comes from Acts chapter 1. I think uh, Brother Earl's going to do the first 11 verses, but I'm going to read 7 through 9 here. It says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and of Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received him out of their sight. If the men would come. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And Lord, the blessings that you send our way. And thank you, Lord, for this Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one that has come this way to worship you. And Lord, we, we praise you, uh, Lord, for, for all that you do for us. Lord, we uh, pray that you bless this offering, bless the uh, giver as well as the gift. And uh, we'll never, ever fail to give you the honor and the glory for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
morning. A uh, couple things. Do not miss the revival next week. You will be blessed. Don't bless your socks off. The music, the preaching, is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be a very busy time at this church. The following Saturday, May the 5th, is sports camp. Our teenagers are running the sports camp. They're doing all the sports. But I need five adults to help with crowd control, moving kids around. They don't have to teach any of the sports. You don't have to teach basketball, soccer, cross country. You don't have to run 12 miles. But I need five adults. I'm going to put you on the spot. I need five people to stand that would help me. Sports camp. Stand up. One, two, three, four, five. We got them. And God good? So all you have to do is basically keep the kids in line. Uh, now, if you want to teach cross country, you know, Norm, if you want to run 12 miles, you're welcome to. Let's stand. We're going to praise God. Take your little core sheets out. Should be in the bulletin. Are we ready? I'm sad and sad. in the name of the Lord.
Please have a seat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seat belts. Put your trays in the upright position. <laughs>
and showed me what it means to be a man. Stand with me. Sing this chorus. Oh. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Oh, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord this morning for those uh, that wonderful that wonderful singing by our choir this morning. And we done pretty good too, didn't we? I heard some pretty good voices back through there. So it's pretty good. You'll take your Bible this morning. Let's be a turn in the book of Acts, the first chapter. Acts chapter one. I uh, reading may be just a little bit lengthy this morning, uh, but I want to read the first 11 verses this morning in your hearing. In Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse number 1, it says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he was through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put it in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. My, what a wonderful passage. Father, we thank you this morning. We just praise you, God, for what you mean to us. We thank you, Father, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come back one day. Thank you, Father, that he's coming back for his waiting bride. Thank you, Father, that you're getting it ready. And Just ask you, Lord, that you would just help us, Father, this morning. Help us, God, just to prepare our hearts. Help us, Lord, I pray, just to prepare our lives. 
for your soon return. Father, we thank you, we praise you, God, for all things. For this we ask in that wonderful, lovely name that's above every name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 The text that I read before you this morning, it, it records the last meeting that Jesus had with his disciples just before that he left this earth and just before that he was going to go back and as the Bible said, he was going to be seated at the right hand of the Father. So Jesus, he makes some statements, he makes some, uh, he says some things here in this passage that is, that was most needful for his disciples, but not only was it most needful for his disciples in that day, but it's most needed for us in the day in which we live. A disciple is, is one that, the Bible describes a disciple is as a follower of Christ. And so if you're here this morning and, and you're a saved, born again child of God, you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, He's, he's placed in this, word, in this passage this morning some things that we need to be doing. I want to take verse number 8 for a text verse this morning and we'll read that verse one more time. And Jesus said, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, before that Jesus he got to this place and this point in the passage, there were some things that he had to take care of. There were some distractions that were taking place back in verse 6 and 7. We find here that Jesus, he was wanting to talk to them and he was trying to establish the first world's missions conference. And we find that his disciples, they were trying to change it into a prophecy conference. Notice what he says in verse 6 and 7. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said of them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. In other words, what Jesus was saying in a, in a very polite way, it's none of your business. There's some things that, that transpire in the Word of God that it's, it's really of none of our business. It's only God's. And so Jesus, He was telling His, his disciples here in, in verse number 8 what they're supposed to be a doing. What they're supposed to be about doing. And I believe that if Jesus spoke these words to His disciples just before that He went back to heaven, I believe that it's very important to us this morning that we see what Jesus said. I believe that it's important for us this morning. And, I, and by the way, I don't think that the message has changed for us. I believe the message is still the same as it was for them. I believe the message is still the same for us. Nothing, nothing has changed. Our duty is not to get, up, get caught up into, into future events. And we see that that's what they were wanting to do. They were trying to get caught up in the future events. But I want to tell you that, that we need to get caught up in the, in the day that we live in. God's going to take care of the future. Amen? God's going to take care of it. And a lot of times we get into a, a big argument or a big debate, a prophecy debate on what's going to transpire in the future. God says most of the time it's none of your business. And that's what He was saying to His disciples. But He said, I do want you to know this Boys, I, they, he said, I do want you to know this. He said, you're my disciples. And he said, I want you to go and be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We see here that verse number 8, he gives the duties that we're supposed to be doing. He gives the duties. Jesus, he commands his disciples that were living in that period of time, what they were supposed to be doing. Verse, verse 8, I think it's very clear. 
I think that it's very clear that every believer is commissioned, commanded, and, in, and constructed to do what God tells us to do, to share the gospel to a lost and dying world. That's what our mission in life is. The Bible says that we are His ambassadors. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.20. An ambassador is someone that's a representative. We're God's representatives this morning. Whether you know it or not, we're supposed to be a, a representing the Lord Jesus Christ. And He's not going to use some angel. He's not going to use anything else. He's going to use us to get the job done. And he's, he's relying on us this morning. We've got a big responsibility. We've got a big responsibility this morning. The Bible says that we are His ambassadors. So His last words were, were a command and a commission to share the gospel message. I believe that if it was important then, I'll say it again, if it was important then, I believe it's more important even in the day that we live in Amen. to get the gospel out. So we see here that Jesus, He gives His last orders. Last orders. He gives the last orders. That's an old military term. The last orders. If you know anything about the military, and there's some people in here that's been in the military, but when you get the last orders, you go on the last orders that you received. It, it, takes, it takes precedence of anything that you received a week or a day in advance, anything that was given in the last orders, that's what you do. And Jesus, by the way, He's not giving any, any more orders for us. We go on the last orders. And he says that we're supposed to be his witnesses. So let's look here this morning. How are we to keep the last orders that Jesus gave us? First of all, I think that we have to have the right message. The right message. Jesus tells his men that there are to be witnesses, he said, in verse number 8, unto me. Not anyone else. Not any, anything else. Jesus is the sole focus of their message. And by the way, Jesus should be the sole focus of our message in the day in which we live. He says that we're supposed to be witnesses, He said, unto Him. He said, unto me. That's not changed. We're supposed to tell the world about Him. We're supposed to be telling the world about what Jesus has done. We're not ordered to talk about us, our lives. We're not ordered to talk about our beliefs, our denominations, although they may be important. There's never a command that we're supposed to talk about them, but we're supposed to talk about Him because He is the message. He's the message. We find here that He gives His message here to His disciples and He says, Be witnesses, He said, unto Me. The gospel of Christ is the power of Unto salvation, the Bible says, everybody that believes. Do you, do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that this, this literally, this, the Word of God is the power unto salvation to everyone that believes? That's what the Bible says in Romans 1.16. I mean, this, this Bible is what transforms people's lives. That's why Jesus said that you need to talk about my Word. That's why Jesus said that you need to be witnesses unto me. Because he's the only one that can change a person's life. I can't change a person's life. You can't change a person's life. Nobody can change a person's life other than Jesus. He's the one that has the power to do that. We must have the, the right message. Our last orders, if we're going to keep them, we've got to keep the right message. We are to tell them about the love of it. About, about the message of His love. We are to share the message of His gospel. We are to tell the world that Jesus saves anyone that will come to Him by faith. Aren't you glad it's that way this morning? Aren't you glad that Jesus, He'll save anybody that will come to Him? We are not to try to impress the world where, with our theology. You know, you, you, you could be a great theologian and still not know Jesus. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, there's some great speakers in the world. There's some great spokesmen in the world. But that don't mean that they know Jesus. Yeah. I want to tell you this morning, we just need to keep our focus on the message, the right message, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We find in the, in the Bible, in, in John chapter, to, chapter 9, we find a, a blind man there. He says, this is, what, this is what he said, I once was blind, but now I see. I can relate to that, can't you? I can relate to that. I was once blind, but now I see. You know, Jesus, He's the, he's the reason. He is the purpose of the right message. Our only mission is to point people to Him. To point them to Him. He's the only hope that this world has for salvation. The Bible says in, in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. It's, uh, it's only through Jesus. It's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. We must have the, have the right message. We must keep the right message. Not only that, but we must have the right methods. The word witness here in verse number 8, it translates in the Greek word martyrs. That's where we get, the, that's where we get our word martyr. It comes from that, that word there, witness there in verse number 8. And it refers to those who bear witness to the truth. We're supposed to bear witness to the truth this morning. We're supposed to bear witness... To the truth. The word witness was used in, in Bible times like it is used today. It speaks of those who testify in a court of law. A witness is, in a trial is called upon to tell what they have seen and what they know. That's what a witness is. We're, we have been called upon to tell what we have seen and what we know. Can I get a witness this morning? Are you a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ? We must keep our, we must have the right methods. The Bible says that we are His witnesses. Do you, do you know anything about Jesus Christ? Do you know anything about Jesus Christ? Has God done anything for you through Jesus Christ? If yes, then you're qualified to tell the world about what Jesus has done. Do you know what God do you know that God loves you? Well tell the world. Tell the world. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Do you know that, that God He'll save a sinner? Well tell the world that. Do you know that God will save anybody and everybody that'll come to Him? Tell the world that. That's what we're supposed to that's what we're supposed to be doing, church. We need to keep the right method. We need to have the right method. And the last orders haven't changed. God still, He's he still commissioned us to do that. He's still telling us to do that. Not only do we need the right message and the right method, but we need to have the right mindset. The right mindset. The witness in a court of law is to testify to the judge and the jury. The witness to Jesus Christ is to testify to the whole entire world. That's a big task, isn't it? That's, the, that's a big task, but that's what Jesus told them to do. That's what Jesus, in verse number 8, told them to do. John, Les, John Wesley once said, he said, the world is my parish. The whole world is my mission field. That's the mindset that we need to have. We need to have the mindset that the whole world needs Jesus Christ as their Savior. Not only just in Jamestown, but in the surrounding counties and in the surrounding states and in this country that we live in and in the uttermost parts of the world, people need to know about Jesus. We need to have that mindset. Let's tell the world that Jesus saves. Let's tell the world that Jesus saves. If you really believe that people are, are going to hell without Jesus, and by the way, they are. If, if we really believe that people that die lost without God go to hell without Jesus, we ought to be a telling them. We ought to be a telling them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We're up. We aren't going to go telling the world about Jesus if we don't know anything about it. 
We're not going to go and tell the world about Jesus if we literally don't believe that Jesus saves. Could it be that we really don't believe everything that we claim that we believe? Could it be that we really don't claim that, that we really don't believe everything that we claim to believe? I believe that if we, if we really believe that Jesus saves, we'd be telling more people about it. He's commissioned us to do that. He's given you your last orders. The orders aren't going to change. The orders are going to stay the same from here to glory. It's going to stay the same. He's not going to change His orders. It could be that we're just saved and satisfied. You heard the old expression, my for and no more. Well, that's not, that's not the, the mindset to have. The mindset to have is to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Could it be that we have forgotten our way in the last orders? Could it be that we have forgotten our way in what Jesus has commissioned us to do. You know the devil would like to get you sidetracked and get you busy doing other things other than telling people about Christ. If he can, he will. And by the way, he's, he's very good at it. He's very good at keeping us distracted on what our orders is supposed to be. I mean, he'll, he'll get churches busy. He'll get churches so, so busy that they don't have time to do anything for God. Amen? Amen. Do, do you honestly believe? Do you honestly believe that, that everything that we do has an eternal purpose? Does everything that we do when we come through those doors either on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night or through the week, do they all have an eternal purpose? Really? I tell you what, the devil wants to get us busy. You can get so busy and leave God out of the agenda. We can get so busy doing things and man, we're just making all types of accomplishments and whoa, look at us, how, how wonderful and great we are here at First Baptist. God just check one up for me. Oh, that's the devil a lot of times. He wants to keep us busy doing things. That's not going to have any eternal value or purpose. Most of the things that we probably do is going to go up in a puff of smoke. You know why? Because a lot of times we do it because we want to be seen of men. A lot of times we want to do it because we want, we want praise. We want to be patted on the back. Am I telling the truth? Yes. We, we must have the right mindset. And the right mindset is to, is to tell people about Jesus. If we don't do that, you can forget the rest of the stuff. It's of no use, of no help. No, it's of no eternal value. We must have the right mindset. Not only that, but we must have the right muscle. And I'm not talking about this. But we must have the right muscle. Let's notice what the, the Bible says in verse 8. He said, but you shall receive power. He says, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We need the power of God in our life. We need the power of God in, in our preaching, in our witnessing. We need the power of God in everything that we do. He's, along these last orders that Jesus tells, us, tells His disciples here, He said, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The only way that you can fulfill the last orders is have the power of God in your life. You've got to have the power of God. You've got to have the power of God on your life to fulfill the last orders that Jesus gave. We need God's power on our lives. We need God's power on our church. Amen? We need God's power in everything that we do. And if it's not of God, we just need to forget about doing it. Because it's of no use. You shall receive power 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall be witnesses, Jesus said, unto me. Let me, let me ask you this morning, church. Are, are we going on our last orders? Or we, do we have our own agenda, our, our own orders? Sometimes we, we go on our, our orders instead of what God's given us in His last orders. I challenge you this morning. I challenge you this morning as a church to go on the last orders that Jesus gave us to be witnesses. It, it sounds simple, doesn't it? When's the last time you've done it? Maybe you've never done it. It's not as simple as it sounds. Oh, it, although it is, but we make it difficult and hard. That's the orders that Jesus gave us. That was the last orders that Jesus ever gave to be witnesses, he said, unto me. You say, preacher, I can't do that. Oh, you can. Because he says there, he said, he will, he will give you the power to do that. He will give you the, the muscle to do that, to fulfill the last orders that he gave you. I challenge you this morning to be witnesses unto him. I want you to stand this morning. Get Brother Gary to come. Maybe you just need to get serious about this thing. Maybe you're just not serious about what you're supposed to be doing. I want to challenge you this morning. If you're here this morning and, and you know what you're supposed to be a, a doing, and I've already told you what you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be a witness in the, for Him. You're supposed to be carrying out your last orders that he gave, not only to his disciples before he went back to heaven, but he gave them to us. If you're not doing that, I want to challenge you to do that this week. I want to challenge you to do that before next Sunday. Tell somebody about Jesus. If you know him, you can tell about him. You can tell about him. Just tell people what Jesus done for you. That's all he asks. While we sing this morning, maybe you're here this morning, you need to come and pray. Maybe there's a need in your life that you just need to come and talk to the Lord about. Whatever it is, it's a good place to pray. It's not the only place to pray, but it's a, it's a good place to pray here at this altar. While Brother Gary leads us in a stone this morning, if you're here this morning, you need to come and talk to the Lord. Why don't you come and pray while while he while Brother Gary sings? Four forty eight. I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed his name to bear. I'll tell the world. Take him with me anywhere. I'll tell the world how Jesus saved me and how he gave me a life brand new. And I know that if you trust him, that all he gave me, he'll give to you. I'll tell the world that he's my Savior. No other one could love me so. My life, my all, is his forever. Where he leads me, I will go. I'll tell the It may be near or far 
Thank you, Brother Gary. Uh, be much in prayer for our revival. Be coming this coming Sunday, and uh, pray for uh, Brother Bill Sword. Be a preaching, and uh, just pray that God would just give him the message that we need, and uh, invite somebody to come with you next Sunday. And let's let's fill this place up, and let's just ask God to uh, just pour out His uh, Holy Spirit out upon us, and uh, that would be. Doing what we're supposed to be doing, uh, telling people about Jesus. Uh, any announcements, Brother Gary? That uh, all right. I, have a, I just want to say, uh, Kathy, Sunday I'll be starting our young women's Sunday school class. The first Sunday of May, so we need to go ahead and get those materials ordered. So any of the younger women that would be interested in participating in that class. There is a sign-up sheet on the board out here, the bulletin board, or if you would just let myself or Kathy know, we'd be glad to add you to that number. So I want to make sure we have enough materials for everybody. And then also the ladies' tea coming up on May 12th. There was almost a little, we almost had to uh, reschedule, but it is the same day. It's in the bulletin this morning, Saturday, May the 12th at 2 p.m. It's going to be in the gymnasium. So we'd love for everybody to come, bring your daughters, um, any ages of women are welcome, your grandmothers, and especially if you know someone, a friend, a co-worker, a family member that doesn't go to church anywhere, we'd love to um, have you invite them and bring them with you as your guests. Amen. Amen. Oh, Frankie Campbell, would you dismiss us this morning in a word of prayer? Hear your word preached. We thank you for this message we've heard. I just pray that, that we would take it to heart, that we would each one, Father, take hold of this uh, duty that we have, this privilege that we have to be your witness. Just pray that we would go out into this world in which we live, be the disciples that you would have us to be, to be your willing servants. Just thank you and we love you and we praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen.